This video is about the eight characteristics of living things. If you come across something and you're wondering whether or not it's alive, you just have to check and be sure that it fulfills all eight of the following characteristics. Now, living things can be classified into six different kingdoms. And those kingdoms are bacteria, archaea, protista, fungi, planty, and animalia. So bacteria and archaea are prokaryotic kingdoms, unicellular organisms. Protists are unicellular eukaryotic organisms, so they do have a nucleus. All right. Fungi, this is going to include your molds, mildews, yeasts, and mushroom style um, fungi. All right. Planty, this is going to take us from mosses, ferns, uh, gymnosperms, which are our conifers and cone-bearing plants, and angiosperms, so these are our flower-bearing plants, right, anything from a rose to a maple tree. Those are all in the kingdom planty. Animalia can take us, there's a nice little frog here, um, will take us anywhere from corals, right, which are the tiniest, m least complex animals, all the way up to mammals, the most complex of the animal kingdom. So these are the characteristics that every organism in these six kingdoms share. First and foremost, all living things are made of cells. Cells is, are the building blocks of life. Anything less than a cell is not alive. Some cells have a rigid cell wall, they're eukaryotic. Other cells may be eukaryotic and have a nucleus, but they don't have a cell wall. Others, um, other organisms are made of just one cell. These are our unicellular prokaryotes, right? And then maybe they have a rigid cell wall, but they don't have a nucleus. These are going to be our um, prokaryotic organisms that are made of just one cell. All living things also need to grow. Now, this may be um, as complex as going from a seed all the way to a giant tree, or as simple as just going from one cell that's small to a larger cell. Either way, growth is an essential characteristic of life. Next, all living things at some stage or another in their life move, right? So this can be anything from as small as like a sperm cell or a paramecium or something that has some little movement um, structures on it or something as complex as running or blinking or any of those things, uh, starfish movement, uh, any time an organism can move, this lets us know, one thing that lets us know it's living. Also all living things reproduce. Now this may happen sexually where we take uh, genetic information from two individuals and combine them to make a brand new genetically unique organism like this mommy and daddy and they make a baby. Or it can be asexual reproduction where you take um, one cell and actually replicate its DNA and then divide it in two so that you have two um, cells that are just like the original. So sexual or asexual reproduction, but an organism has to be able to reproduce on its own. Next, all living things take in and use energy. Now if you're a producer, like a plant or algae, the energy you're taking in is from the sun, right? And they're going to turn it from light energy into glucose, right? And then all living things will take the glucose that they either make or consume or absorb from a decomposition. They'll take that glucose and transform it into a molecule called ATP. ATP is the energy molecule that helps living things do work, right? So they're going to take in energy and then they're going to use this ATP energy to do all of their functions. Okay, next, all living things, again, from the tiniest bacteria, uh, plants do this, all living things in all kingdoms respire. So they take in oxygen from the atmosphere, um, it goes through part of its metabolism, right? 
and then CO2 is a byproduct, right? So all living things, bacteria, plants, everybody takes in oxygen and releases CO2. The last two things are all living things excrete waste. So, right, we're taking in energy, we're taking in food, we're taking in oxygen. All of our metabolic processes also have waste products. So this could be, right, like sweat, urine, feces. Um, sometimes it's just chemicals that get released out of the skin, right, or the outer layer. So in this example, I have a bird, oops, pooping on somebody's car. Um, but all living things excrete waste. And finally, all living things respond to stimuli. So if you have something going on in the environment that's coming at you, an organism can respond to that. So in this top example, you may not realize that plants move, okay? But plants do respond to the sun and they can actually bend towards the light in order to have a greater photosynthetic effect. So that's kind of neat. And in this example here, when human eyes are exposed to light, the irises that are normally open to leave big, nice pupils to let light in, when there's a lot of bright light, the pupil will shrink so that less light is able to come in. So even that is a response to a stimulus. And these are the eight most important characteristics of all living things.